We gotta talk about Charlie Brown, y'all. This is part two of the racist origins of the term, the peanut gallery. I'm Dara Star Tucker, and this is The Breakdown. So as I said in part one, the peanut gallery was originally a reference to the segregated section where black patrons had to sit in Southern theaters. They would sometimes throw peanuts at the stage to heckle the performers, hence the name, the peanut gallery. It was also called the N-word gallery or N-word heaven. It was eventually used as a general word in vaudeville to refer to the cheap seats. Well, several people mentioned the Charles Schultz comics as their only reference for the term peanuts. And a few asked whether or not this was related to the peanut gallery. Unfortunately, the answer is probably yes. So this is what happened. Charles Schultz started out drawing the Charlie Brown cartoons for his hometown newspaper, the St. Paul Pioneer Press, in 1947. It became so popular that United Features Syndicate offered to distribute it to newspapers nationwide, which was great. But the problem was they didn't like the name Lil Folks. There was already a failed comic strip called Little Folks, and there was a hugely successful comic strip at that time called Lil Abner. So a man named Bill Anderson, who was the production manager at United Features Syndicate, suggested the name Peanuts, along with nine other possible names. Now, according to Peanuts historian Matt Girdler, the reason that Anderson chose this name was because of the popularity of a children's show called Howdy Doody Time, which aired from 1947 to 1960. The studio audience for this show was made up of about 40 children, which the host Buffalo Bob Smith referred to as the Peanut Gallery. Oh, well, howdy doody, boys and girls, and, and howdy doody, rodeo, right? Hi there, howdy doody. <laughs> Hi, kids at home. Hi, Clara Bell. And look at all the wonderful kids in the Peanut Gallery. Hi, kids. What time is it? You're right. Anderson felt that the public would get the reference to children as peanuts because of the popularity of that show. The problem was Charles Schultz hated the name. Schultz wanted to call it good old Charlie Brown, but UFS decided to go with peanuts. I think it could very well be the worst title that anyone has ever thought of for a comic strip. <laughs> there was no real indication that Schultz knew the racist origins of the title. He just thought it was undignified. He famously said about the name, I don't even like the word. It's not a nice word. It's totally ridiculous. It has no meaning. It's simply confusing and has no dignity. I think my humor has dignity. They, UFS, didn't know when I walked in there that here was a fanatic. Here was a kid totally dedicated to what he was going to do. And then to label something that was going to be a life's work with a name like Peanuts was really insulting. Schultz never stopped protesting this name change. If you'll notice, when he sold the strip to TV, none of the films contain the word peanuts. You get titles like A Charlie Brown Christmas, It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, and Charlie Brown's All-Stars. Not until the 2015 film did they actually use the word peanuts, which probably would have mortified Charles Schultz. So yes, like a lot of things in US history, the title can be tied to America's racist past, but thankfully the characters and the creator aren't to blame. We'll just save this video for another time.